Uh, uh, moving on, we're talking about primordials today. Now, where to start? Primordials are easily some of the most important creatures within the entire Adventure Time story, and because of that, this actually may be one of the longest videos I have ever done, so pack up your things, get a snack, because this might take a while. Starting off, what exactly is a primordial creature? And the answer is pretty simple. They are a unique form of monster that basically existed before time and existence ever began, basically before the Big Bang. While calling them monsters isn't exactly fair, they're closer to concepts given physical form. Regardless, one thing you should be aware of is that there is no such thing as a good primordial. Every single primordial that we have ever encountered has always shown a complete disregard for mortal life. Koka and Tepi raised an entire cult-like following which continuously sacrificed each other as well as destroy entire countries just for fun. Orgolorg destroyed entire worlds, conquered an entire solar system, and devoured thousands of populations just because he thought it would be kind of funny. And don't even get me started on the Lich or the various prisoners that were in the Citadel. Now, despite this incredibly bleak picture, I actually do not believe they do this out of malice, but more so due to the way they have been created. If you were an incredibly powerful cosmic entity, where the only thing that could possibly match you are gods who were created by your own thoughts and imagination, and the cosmic powers that are already above you in the first place, humility is no longer an option, it's a punchline. However, obviously there's always exceptions, and it's possible there were some that decided to be different, but I highly doubt it considering they all seem to be chaotic monsters. Now even though they all seem to share some traits from one another, it should be noted that every single one of them is different in terms of their core beliefs. There's also a matter of their form. I already mentioned how every single one possesses their own unique beliefs, but their forms are also just as chaotic. Some are the size of entire planets. Others are smaller but possess unique features, such as tendrils that can absorb the essence of various creatures. Due to their chaotic nature, their form can pretty much be anything you can imagine, and can be as terrifying as you can imagine. There's also a matter of power. The Primordials are seriously some of the most powerful entities in all of existence. A good example of this would be Kokon Tepi. Kokon Tepi had such an understanding of the universe that he became one of the first wizards to ever exist. His affinity for it was so great that simply consuming some of his blood would give you godlike power. Pretty much every single spell that you can possibly imagine is something that he was fully capable of utilizing. Yes, this even includes wish magic. So reality warping is completely on the table just when you're talking about Kokon Tepi alone. You also need to realize that due to the fact that they existed prior to time itself, they are completely aware of how time works and exist in every single time line and difference in reality. To put this in a simple term, they share one mind across an eternal cosmos. This also makes them functionally immortal, both in the physical sense as well as the cosmic sense. When I say in the physical sense, I mean it quite literally. They are incredibly hard to put down, even by destroying their physical bodies. Orgolorg was still able to speak and was completely sentient and was able to regenerate even after having his entire upper body completely destroyed by Finn. Kokon Tepi's body was completely obliterated, however his heart continued to pump blood and he was still somewhat sentient. He was even capable of completely reincarnating himself with all of his memories and understanding of the universe as long as someone consumed his blood. This somewhat leads me to believe that they are somewhat immortal as long as their essence or at least some piece of them survives. Unless of course something in particular was specifically designed to kill them, but we'll talk about that later. It's also nearly impossible to kill them in the cosmic sense, because even if you completely destroy one of their vessels, they are continuously existing in every single dimension of reality naturally. And as I mentioned before, every single one of these vessels and incarnations completely know everything every other vessel of theirs knows. So basically, they are a hive mind. And the only way to deal with them is to completely wipe them from every single form of existence at the same time, which still results in you having to kill at least one of them, which is already next to impossible. But moving on, let's talk about each individual primordial that we currently know about. Starting off strong, we have Orgolorg, who is one of the worst cosmic entities just by the sheer amount of cosmic crimes he has committed. Believe it or not, Orgolorg was one of the smallest entities that we saw within the Sea of Monsters. Now, size doesn't actually always equal power, but if it does in this particular instance, that would mean that Orgolorg was actually one of the weakest of all of the primordials that we currently know about. If that actually is the case, let that sink in, because this guy was still more powerful than 90% of the entire cast of Adventure Time. Now, a long time ago, after time originally began, he began his 
conquest, taking over entire planets as well as an entire solar system to boot. Now, he would rule as a tyrant for an incredibly long period of time, in which he would then proceed to conquer various planets and destroy various planets along with their populations, committing mass genocide. It is stated that he continuously looked for greater power in order to become an even greater threat to the cosmos. Luckily for him, he possesses a very unique ability which allows him to absorb the essence of any creature. When he desires to assimilate another creature, he will envelop them and then begin digging various tendrils within their body. This process is relatively quick, but is incredibly painful for anyone who is still alive while being consumed. The tendrils will begin sucking out the essence as well as the nutrients within whatever is actually being consumed and then will apply it to his own body. Now, it is unknown whether or not the creatures that he absorb actually die or if they continuously live as part of him. But honestly, I like to think about it this way, mainly because it adds a whole new level of horror to something that is already terrifying. Now, after he absorbs another creature, he will gain everything that they possessed, their knowledge, their powers, their unique genetic code. Every single thing that they were capable of doing is now something that he can do. He can even absorb their cosmic energies in order to gain access to powers and domains that he has no business messing with. Now, considering that we know he most likely consumed various other creatures, it's possible that many of the abilities that he showcased are possibly not even his own, but instead powers he stole from others. Speaking of which, let's talk about those abilities. For one, he possesses an incredible control over his own physical shape, allowing him to shapeshift his body in pretty much any way to suit his own needs. Whether it be lengthening certain parts of his body or flat out changing his form entirely in order to consume something, there are pretty much no limitations here. Well, at least not any limitations that have been abundantly made clear. Not only that, but he has interstellar flight. This allows him to move at such incredible speeds that he's able to get from planet to planet within the matter of minutes. He also has incredible strength and stamina with pretty much no chance of ever becoming exhausted. He also seems to possess some level of energy projection, however, all he's really shown is the ability to create holograms. He is also immune to having a soul taken by someone like Hunt and Abadir. However, despite all this power, he would still get his butt handed to him by both Finn as well as Glob. Theoretically speaking, however, if he were to have absorbed the Catalyst Comet along with Finn, considering he also possesses the essence of another Catalyst Comet plus the Grass Sword, he would have been one of the most powerful entities within the entire universe. It should also be noted that he does in fact have a biological child who possesses cosmic importance as it has shown magical capabilities. Moving on, we have Kokon Tepe. Now, Kokon Tepe does not have too much information, but I can work with what we got. Kokon Tepe was one of the first wizards to ever exist within the land of Ut, and he was the one who created Wizard City. Pretty much all magic that is utilized today is in some way connected to his original teachings, which is why so many people call him the source of all magic. Now, why exactly he would teach mortals magic, considering he has shown that he absolutely despises all mortals, is unknown. It's possible he just did it for entertainment, but it's also possible they picked it up as they went, but regardless, it would result in the creation of Wizard City in a cult-like following. The population of Wizard City would worship him like a god, and in doing so, inflate his already inflated ego. Now, when you take a city of magic users, give them in the hands of a corrupt, incredibly powerful, near-god-like entity who hates all life similar to that of the Lich, you are going to get some pretty bad results. Wizard City was overrun with dark magic, and they would utilize it in order to pretty much dominate a good portion of the world, also while doing various sacrifices and absolute degeneracy, all in the name of Kokon Tepe. However, a select group of wizards would actually rebel against Kokon Tepe in hopes to restore the balance within the world. Many fans believe that this was the event that caused the creation of Bella Noche in hopes to utilize her as a super weapon in order to fight Kokon Tepe, which actually makes sense when you factor in Kokon Tepe's absolute dominance over magical power. With only a cup of his blood, meaning that he wasn't even a tenth as powerful as he was supposed to be, he was able to completely outclass multiple high-ranking wizards. In this very weakened state, mind you, he showed abilities such as disintegration, the ability to harm astral bodies, as well as the ability to create flames that would completely erase someone from existence. But at the height of his power, he had pretty much every single ability that you could possibly imagine. Despite all this power, however, he would be bested by the rebels and would be sealed underneath all of Wizard City. However, he was still not dead. Not only was he still sentient despite the destruction of his body, but his heart would still beat. And as it beats, it continuously oozes out his blood, which if consumed will allow him to completely take over a new vessel and transform it into a new body for himself if they have enough willpower and potential to control his potential abilities. Something I should mention, however, is that a small piece of Kokon Tepe's energies are within Chuskus as he consumed a diluted form of his blood. Next up, we have the Lich, and here's the thing. A lot of people gave me a lot of flack saying that he's not a primordial, and I beg to differ. Every single bit of evidence points at the Lich being a primordial after the idea of primordials was introduced. So let's start off with Exhibit A. Now, this one is particularly obvious 
this, it's the fact that he had complete memory of everything that happened during the Sea of Monsters. And not only was he aware enough to know that the Sea of Monsters existed, but was able to actively represent specific entities that we know existed during that time, such as the Orgolor. Another thing that I thought I should mention is that many people believe that this was simply due to the fact that he was a Catalyst Comet and they were stated to know everything between the beginning and the end. This is not the case. Which leads me to Exhibit B, which is the fact that Finn had no memory of the Sea of Monsters. If we follow the idea that the comets know everything between the beginning and the end, then Finn himself, being a Catalyst Comet, would have the memory of the Sea of Monsters, but he doesn't, even after fully opening the vault on numerous occasions. This means that Catalyst Comets technically exist within the stream of time, and can see the beginning of time and the end of time, but not anything before it. However, as I mentioned, he has complete memory of this particular event, meaning he does not have that weakness, and him being a primordial would be a direct answer to that. Lastly, he has also shown that he not only shares many of the narcissistic traits that various other primordials possess, but he also has shown that he has an incredible respect for other ancients like himself. With that being said, let's continue. Now, the Lich is getting his own video eventually, so I'm not going to add too many details here. That being said, I'll give you a quick summary. The Lich is the literal embodiment of the death of all things and evil incarnate, and because of that, he pretty much destroys everything he comes into contact with, no matter how long it takes. Now, he is incredibly intelligent, and will actively go out of his way to pretty much scheme over centuries in order to fulfill his one desire, which is to destroy all life. For the most part, he does this without malice. He does not do this because he hates all life, but due to the fact that it is ingrained into his mind. In fact, if he is ever put in a situation where mass death is impossible, he will enter a catatonic state in which he will continuously plan out a way to make it possible. Now, he will go to any length in order to achieve this one goal, whether it be to obtain a wish from a wishmaster or taking over the literal embodiment of death to suit his own means. Now, the reason I'm keeping it light on the Lich is due to the fact that, again, he's getting his own video, and the other two have not been in anywhere near as many episodes as him, and I will be here all day if I were to actually go over everything. Now, moving on, one thing I should also mention is that the Ancients, or the Primordials, are on the cusp of extinction. And you may be wondering, well, how is that possible? I literally had an entire section detailing how they are very hard to kill and are pretty much immortal. Well, let me introduce you to the Speculation section as well as the Primordial War Theory. Now, the Primordial War Theory is a theory that I personally made, which details a war that takes place sometime after time originally began, which saw to the destruction of various Primordials. Now, I actually have quite a few videos that are around this particular subject, so I'm going to be linking them in the description below, but I will try to add as much detail as I can here. Now, the Primordial War Theory is based around three things. The first is very simple, which is the fact that the Primordials are on the cusp of extinction, which is something that is incredibly hard to comprehend when you realize that they numbered in the millions and were more powerful than pretty much 90% of the things within Adventure Time. Another reason why I believe this took place is due to the Lich. As I mentioned before, I believe the Lich was a Primordial monster. However, if this is the case, he would have had to die in order to be reincarnated as a Catalyst Comet. Considering that the Lich, the literal embodiment of the death of all things, had his body destroyed and he was reincarnated, definitely is something that I believe should not be overlooked, especially since this is a similar fate that many other primordials shared. There's also the matter of the Citadel. The Citadel is a cosmic prison, which was specifically designed in order to house some of the most dangerous cosmic entities within the entire multiverse. And considering that a good amount of the prisoners within the Citadel were primordials, this raises a lot of questions. First off, we have to figure out who and what their enemies were during this time. Remember, time had just begun, and with time and the creation of the multiverse, new things were beginning to arise. Remember, before there was nothing, there were monsters, and the fact of the matter was, they lived within a chaotic soup. Death did not exist, nor did the idea of time exist. What this basically means is that incredibly powerful cosmic entities that we are aware of, such as Death, Glob, and various others, only appear after the universe was created. Regardless of how exactly they get there, there was a major shift in power, and now the Primordials had a rival. Now, you may be thinking that I'm just grasping at straws, however, I do not believe I am because of two particular characters, which would be Darren and Ellie. Darren and Ellie are sentient constructs whose entire purpose was to wage war. Here's the thing, Darren has a very interesting ability, and this power is to erase creatures across all of existence. And what kind of creature is unkillable unless you completely wipe them from existence? The Primordials. In fact, prior to his resurrection by the hands of the Sky Witch, he flat out detailed a battle in which creatures were able to create more of themselves utilizing their own blood. Another thing that I thought I should mention is that Darren flat out states and behaves as though he predates the elements. This along with the fact that Ellie was created around the same time in order to fight a very dangerous 
dangerous war, I believe that these two were basically comrades within the Primordial War. There's also the matter of the Citadel, because the fact of the matter is the Citadel was specifically made utilizing constructs in order to serve a particular purpose, which in this case was to contain various Primordials who had done cosmic crimes. And considering that we know killing cosmic entities is considered a cosmic crime, this would make sense why they are there. Considering that the Sun is older than Ellie, I would assume that this war has to take place a couple billion years before the main story. Now, another thing that I thought I should mention would be exactly what happens to a primordial after they die. Now, although this isn't entirely correct, it's possible that they get reincarnated into a new form. Considering that the Lich himself was reincarnated into the Catalyst Comet of Evil, it's possible that others have been reincarnated into Catalyst Comets or into a different form altogether. Anyway, that's all I got for this video. This video took a lot to get out because this is three times the amount of work I typically put myself through. But you guys really wanted those longer videos, so I thought I would go ahead and try my best to supply you with them. Anyway, if you really like Adventure Time as well as other videos like this, be sure to hit that bell icon and subscribe. It really helps out a lot and really helps the algorithm and really helps me get motivated to continue making videos like this. Also, be sure to like, maybe share with your friends. It's also very useful if you guys have a good idea for me to improve or make a video on. If you have one of those particular ideas, be sure to put it down in the comments below. I try to read every single one and I hope I can get to every single one of you guys. So anyway, as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye.